All right. Give yourself a chance to read the question. I have the details more or less laid out here. We are given that we have some kind of loss due to theft. So I think you can imagine what that pretty much means. Someone steals your stuff and hopefully they have an insurance um, policy on that. Well, it only helps if you actually get something stolen, right? That's the only time insurance helps. But let's say you get something stolen, then hopefully you have an insurance policy, right? Either way, they tell you a deductible of three. Okay, probably this is in thousands, I would assume. Or maybe hundreds, maybe that's more realistic. Regardless, doesn't matter. Um, the losses are distributed uniformly. Okay, and there's a, a couple of different consequences from that. One of them being that the density function is one tenth, okay? for my interval is zero to 10. So if my losses X range from zero, maybe dollars to $10, okay? All right, I wanna know something about the claim payment. Specifically, I wanna know the moment generating function of the claim payment. So you might be saying, well, how do I write down the claim payment? That's probably one of the most important things here is you have to get used to writing down the claim payment. The way I pretty much always write down a claim payment, especially the deductible, is a piecewise defined function. Well, piecewise defined random variable, since this is gonna be a random variable. Okay, the range is a bunch of values, numerical, real numbers. So what is the formulation of the claim payment? I can write it as, all right, well, if I'm the insurance company uh, and you get something stolen, I pay you zero dollars, if what? <laughs> if your losses are less than the deductible. I pay you zero uh, for zero less than X less than B. Your losses, your losses are less than the deductible. Um, and well, the deductible is three. So I get in the habit of just putting B. There we are. When do I, as the insurance company, pay you something? Well, I pay you the losses that exceed the deductible, right? I pay you the losses minus the deductible if the losses exceed the deductible. If the losses exceed the deductible, well, my losses don't go any farther than 10. So I have that. All right, it's all really good. Um, Another way you can write this, actually, if you think about it for a second, the claim payment equals zero if the losses are less than deductible. You can also say the loss, the claim payment is equal to zero if x minus three is less than zero. That's exactly equivalent to this. And you can also say the, lo uh, the claim payment equals x minus three if x minus three is greater than zero. So what I'm getting at here is we can also say we can also write that XP, the claim payment, is equal to the maximum of zero uh, running out of room. We can also write that the claim payment is equal to the maximum of zero and X minus three. Now, what is the benefit of writing it this way? One thing um, I always am telling people to do is to draw a damn picture. If you can draw a picture, in my opinion, it's always helpful. You may not always be able to draw a picture that's useful in math, but if you can, do it. So, what is my picture? Okay, pertaining to this. It's going to be helpful when I'm looking for the moment generating function. A picture can look like the following. So, here, Let's say that here is just my axis of uh, the losses. Here are my losses, right? When my losses are less than the deductible of three, then what is my claim payment equal to? My claim payment is equal to zero. If my losses are greater uh, than three, then my claim payment 
is equal to x minus three. This is gonna help me when I'm figuring out my moment generating function. I'm gonna use the value of zero when I'm between zero and three, I'm gonna use the value of x minus three uh, after three. I mean, this says the same thing as this, but I don't know. I like little pictures, diagrams, anything that helps, okay? So I want the MGF, the moment generating function. So I'm looking for, let's just first uh, set it up. I'm looking for the moment generating function of XP. Now what is this going to be equal to? This is going to be equal to zero between zero and three and x minus three between three and whatever. Three and 10, I guess, right? Three and 10, okay, I'm going even greater than 10. So this is going to be equal to um, the moment generating function of zero plus the moment generating function of x minus three. And again, it's good to keep in mind here um, that this is uh, right here. This is for zero less than x less than three. And this is for three less than x less than 10. It doesn't matter where I include three. I include it on both, so I guess in a way that's wrong, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, you can include it right here if you want. All right, so we're looking good. I'm just going to now use a definition of moment generating function. Remember that this is equal to the expected value, the expectation of e to the t times whatever your random variable is. So t times, in this case, my random variable is zero. So e to the t times zero, plus the expectation of e to the t times my random variable, times x minus three. So there is just using the definition. Um, of course, e to the t times zero is one. So this is the expected value of one. Uh, but let me just write it actually as an integral because we need to keep track of this information here. So this is actually zero to three of this is one, so one times the density function, one tenth. And I'm integrating uh, actually with respect to x plus using the definition here, this is the integral from three to 10 of e to the t x minus three times one tenth dx. This is what I need to compute, and then I'm done. It's really not too bad once you understand the logic up to this point. So let me just come up here, um, and we can finish this, okay? So what do we have right now? Right now I have the following. I have that the moment generating function of the our claim payment is equal to the sum of these two in integrals. So I'm just gonna copy these two integrals up here, uh, and then we can think about what we need to do. There's something, I mean, I should have maybe cleaned that up a little bit, but that's fine, that's fine. So I have the integral from zero to three of one tenth dx plus, now uh, looking right here, well, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. Uh, the e to the tx uh, minus three. Remember, for an integral, you can factor anything out of the integrand that does not depend on x. So this is what I'm gonna do. This is equal to, this integral right here is equal to uh, e to the negative 3t over 10, I could have factored the 1 tenth out as well, times the integral from three to 10 of what? Of e to the tx dx. Again, I mean, I only needed to keep expressions that depend on x. All right, so now let's continue. We're pretty much there. I mean, this is really just a straightforward integral at this point, so not a big deal. So um, let's 
do this just thinking about our properties here. I mean, here I'm integrating a constant. If I integrate a constant, this is basically the length of the interval I'm integrating over. So three minus zero. So this first one here, this first one is equal to one tenth times three minus zero. That's this integral. This integral over here, what do I need to use? What technique do I need to use? The first thing should always be, okay, let me just see if I can do a straight, straightforward integral. Right, I mean, just antiderivative. Next thing is do substitution. If that doesn't work, integration by parts, and a whole other sucky stuff, right? Fortunately though, I mean, I'm integrating respect to x. So I still have the e to the negative 3t over 10, but then when I integrate this piece right here, you substitution. Now if you've done this as much as I've done this, you don't actually do the u substitution. You don't actually make the substitution, but you just do it, right? Because this right here is just equal to e to the tx divided by t. Now what I used to always say to students is that make sure this works. How do I know if this works? If I differentiate this piece, I should get the integrand. Okay, if I differentiate this, it's e to the tx times the derivative of tx. Derivative of tx is t, cancel that t, get the integrand, so I'm good. Throw in these bounds of integration, and I'm only going to implement them uh, for this piece. Only implementing them for those that, that piece right there. So this gives me now that I have 3 tenths, this part is 3 tenths, plus e to the negative 3t divided by 10. And when I throw in the bounds of integration using the fundamental theorem of calculus, just plug them in for x. Uh, so this looks like uh, quantity e to the 10t minus e to the 3t all over t. So we're pretty, we're technically there. I mean, the moment generating function is a function of t. No longer have x. So let's just clean it up slightly. So this is equal to 3 tenths. Distribute this expression right here. Um, and just use your properties of exponents here. 10 minus 3, so 7. So plus uh, e to the 7t minus, well, this is going to be e to the 3t uh, times e to the negative 3t. So this is just actually 1 divided by 10t. And there is my moment generating function uh, for the claim payment. Again, just to reiterate why this is potentially useful. This is useful because if you know the moment generating function, and if you're watching this video, you probably do, then you know that I can find the expected value from this. If I differentiate this and replace t with zero, that gives me the average claim payment, the expected claim payment. Excuse me. From there, I can find the variance, standard deviation, things like that. So quite useful stuff. Uh, please like the video, comment, and subscribe.